Hey, what is going on you guys? Today we're going to be going over how to build a discounted cash flow analysis model step by step. And you can see this is what the finished product will look like once we have completed the project. So with that being said, let's go ahead and open up a new sheet and we will go ahead and begin. So the very first thing we need to know is what company we're going to perform a discounted cash flow model on. And for this analysis, let's say we're going to perform a DCF on the Walt Disney Company. So I'm going to come up here and title this Disney DCF model. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an area right here and we'll merge these cells, give it an outer border, and we will give this a title. And we'll just give it D Disney DCF analysis model. And we will center this text and we will increase the font size. Okay. So now we're ready to actually start building out our model. And in order to perform a discounted cash flow analysis, we need to make some assumptions about what the free cash flows for the Walt Disney Company will be in the future. Anytime we want to make predictions about a company's future growth, we want to use data from prior years that will allow us to predict what the company's future growth is likely to be. So with that being said, we need to find some data on the free cash flows of the Walt Disney Company in prior years. So I'm going to head over to Google and I'm going to type in Walt Disney Company free cash flows. And we can see here a website called Macro Trends came up. This is going to be the website we use to find the free cash flows for Disney. And I'm going to scroll down here. And we can see here we have the annual free cash flows for the Walt Disney Company. And we can see pretty steady growth if we start down here and work our way up. And we can see around when COVID hit, the free cash flows for the Walt Disney Company were affected pretty greatly. So what we want to do since COVID is not likely to last forever is we want to take data pre-COVID. So that starts in 2018. And so if we want 10 years of prior, prior data, we want to go from 2009 to 2018. And that's going to be the free cash flow data that we need. So let's go ahead and we'll come over here and we want to make a year column and we want to make a free cash flow column. And we'll expand this. And so we want data starting in 2008, or excuse me, 2009 all the way to 2018. And we'll put a quick formula together to do that. So that's all the way through 2016 and there's 2018. And so let's start in 2018 and work our way back. So in 2018, the free cash flows was 9830. 2017, 8720. In 2016, it was 8363. 2015, 7120. 2014, 6469. 2013, 6656. 2012, 4182. 2011, it was 3435. 2010, 4468. And in 2009, it was 3566. So now we have our years and we have the free cash flows for those years. So let's go ahead and box off these areas and we will box off the year in free cash flow. And remember, the reason that we need the cash flows for prior years is it's going to allow us to find the average growth rate of the Walt Disney Company, which we can then use to find the future growth of the Walt Disney Company. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to create a formula below this. And in this formula, we are going to calculate the growth rate year over year. So I'm going to select the 2010 free cash flow minus the 2009 free cash flow put those in parentheses, and then we are going to divide that by the 2009 free cash flow. When I hit enter, we can see here I have the growth rate for this year. So from 2009 to 2010, the Walt Disney Company grew 25.29% on 
on their free cash flows. So let's take this formula and drag it all the way across. And now we have the growth rate for all of these years. So let's go ahead and label this right here growth and I will reformat this area real quick. And the next thing that we are gonna to wanna to do is we wanna take all of these growth rates and we wanna average them. So if we come right here, let's just type in average growth. And to do this, all we need to do is we will come here and do equals and type in average and open the parentheses and we will highlight all of these growth rates. And we can see, I hit enter here, we can see that the average growth rate for the past 10 years for the Walt Disney Company is 13.87%. So this is the percentage we're gonna use to calculate the future free cash flows. So now I'm gonna come down here and make the area where we are gonna calculate our future free cash flows. So I'm just gonna type out year and I'm gonna type out future free cash flows and the next year is 2022 so that'll be the year we put right here and we want to calculate this all the way out until 2030 so let's take this and we'll drag it all the way here and the next to 2030 we also need to know the terminal value and I'll get back to what that means here in just a second so for 2022 to calculate this free cash flow, what we need to do is we need to find the free cash flow of our most recent year of data. We can see that's 2018. We have 9830. So we're going to take that number and we are going to multiply it by one plus our average growth rate. And I'm going to hit enter and we can see here we have the future free cash flow for 2022. For 2023, we're going to essentially do the same thing. We want to take the future free cash flow from the most recent year. So now it's this number right here. And we want to multiply that by one plus our average growth rate again. But this time, we want this to be a dynamic formula that we can drag all the way across. So I'm going to actually put dollar signs in front of our average growth rate and hit enter. And you can see now when I drag this across, our future free cash flows automatically fill in. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the decimal places. And now we can see we have the future free cash flow for our business. And now all that we need to do is we need to calculate our terminal value. So what is terminal value? Terminal value is the value of an asset or a business beyond the forecasted period when future free cash flows can be estimated. So in our case, the terminal value of the Walt Disney Company is going to be all of the future free cash flows past the year 2030. And it's important to remember that the terminal value assumes a business will grow at a set growth rate forever beyond the forecasted period. And in order to calculate this, we are going to need two different things. We are going to need a perpetual growth rate. And that is the rate at which the company will grow every year beyond the year 2030. And then we need a discount rate. And our discount rate is going to be what our minimum rate of return would be. So if we were to invest our money elsewhere, this is the return we would be able to receive without any risk. And let me go ahead and fix this spelling error here. And so let's say for our perpetual growth rate, that's typically going to be the growth rate that the economy grows at. So you could go with either about 2.5% or 3% or somewhere in the middle. For this, I'm going to use 2.5%. And for our discount rate, let's go ahead and go with 8%. And we are now ready to calculate our terminal value. So in order to calculate our terminal value, we are going to take our prior free cash flow and we are going to multiply this by 1 plus our perpetual growth rate. And then we are going to divide that by our discount rate minus our perpetual growth rate and if we hit enter here you can see we now have the terminal value of the Walt Disney Company and remember a terminal value means the value of the all the future free cash flows of the Walt Disney Company beyond the year 2030 so let's go ahead and remove the decimals from this and let's go ahead and center all of this text on our screen 
So the next thing that we need to do is we need to discount our future free cash flows back to their present value. So I'm gonna come here and create a present va value of future free cash flows column. And there is actually already a formula in place to do this. So in order to do this formula, I'm gonna list out some numbers in numerical order here, and you'll see why here in just a second. So it's gonna be one through 10. And in order to perform our formula, we're gonna need these numbers, and I'll show you why. So we're gonna do equals, and we're gonna take the future free cash flow for the year 2022, and we're gonna divide this by one plus our discount rate here. And I want this to be a dynamic formula that refers back to our discount rate each time. So I'm gonna put dollar signs in front of my discount rate. And we are gonna close these parentheses and then we actually wanna raise this to the power of one. So in order to do this in Google Sheets, you do this symbol and we want it to refer to one right here. And if I hit enter, we now have the present value of our future free cash flow in the year 22. And so the formula for the year 2023 will be the exact same. We wanna take the future free cash flow for 2023 and we wanna discount it back to its present value. But since it's another year out, we are actually gonna raise it to the second. And because this is an interactive formula, it should refer to it automatically. So if we take a look at this formula, we can see it refers to the future free cash flow for the year 2023. It refers to our discount right here, and it raises it to the second power. So that formula is correct. So we can take this and we can drag it all the way across. And we can see here, we now have the present value of all of our future free cash flows, including even our terminal value. So let's go ahead and highlight these cells and we will center this tech, or excuse me, let's go ahead and take the decimal places out. So now that we have the present value of all of the future free cash flows of our company, we need to add them together. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna make a new area and we are gonna title this sum of future free cash flows. And I'm working in Google Sheets and whether in Google Sheets or Excel, you should have a sum formula. If you do equal sum, open parentheses and highlight the present value of all these future free cash flows, and close the parentheses and hit enter, we can see the sum of all the future of these free cash flows. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to find the equity value of the Walt Disney Company but in order to find the equity value, we also need to know the company's cash and cash equivalents as well as their total debt. So let's go ahead and write out cash slash cash equivalents right here. And then we also need to know their total debt. So in order to find this information, all we're gonna do is we are gonna head back over and we are gonna go to Yahoo Finance And we are gonna pull up the Walt Disney Company. So we'll type in Disney's ticker right here, which is just D-I-S. And we'll click search. And here's the Walt Disney Company. So we'll pull it up. And in order to find cash and cash equivalents and total debt, we need to go to the balance sheet. So if we go here to financials, And we can scroll down. We can see currently we're on the income statement. We need to look at the balance sheet. So I'll click right here. And for our cash and cash equivalents, that is a current asset. So if we go to total assets and break this out and click on current assets, we can see right here the cash and cash equivalents is listed at 17914. So let's head back over to our worksheet and we'll put in 17914 and now we need to find our total debt and our total debt will be a liability so let's scroll down and we can see here our total debt is listed at 58628 so let's go back over to our worksheet and we'll put in 58628 let's make sure that was correct 58628 yes it is okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to calculate our equity value And in order to calculate our equity value, all we need to do is take the sum of our free cash flows, add our cash and cash equivalents, and then subtract our total debt. 
And now we have the equity value of our firm and we are almost at the end. The next thing we need is our shares outstanding. So if we go back to Yahoo Finance, let's go ahead and scroll up. And if we go here to statistics, and we need to look for shares outstanding. And if we come here to shares statistics, we can see here our shares outstanding. And we can see the Walt Disney Company has 1.82 billion shares outstanding currently. So in millions, that's gonna be 1.820. And here is where we are gonna to come to our price per share. And to get our price per share, all we need to do is we are going to take our equity value and we are going to divide this by our shares outstanding. And we can see here, based on that, Walt Disney Company's price per share, according to our discounted cash flow analysis model, should be $191.56. And now that we have our price per share, this is where a lot of people will end their DCF analysis but there's actually a couple more things we can add on if we want to. So what a lot of people are gonna to wanna to see is they are gonna to wanna to see a comparison of the current price to our price per share that we came to. So what we'll do here is we'll come down and we'll go ahead and list the current price of the Walt Disney Company. So if we head back over to Yahoo Finance, we can see the price per share right here, 179.09. We'll list this here and we are gonna to wanna to see if there is any upside to us buying the stock right now. So we wanna find the difference as a percentage. So in order to do this, all we're gonna do is we're gonna do equals and we wanna take our price per share that we calculated from our DCF model and subtract that by the current price. And then we are gonna divide that by the current price as well. And let's take this and set it to a percentage and we can see that based off our calculations and our model, the Walt Disney Company is currently undervalued at around 7%. And the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and format this and add some color. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead in the video and do that now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and you can see I finished the model. All I've done is some formatting and added some color to our model. So this is what our finished model looks like. And you can see we have calculated the intrinsic value of the Walt Disney Company according to the discounted cash flow model. And what we've done is we've compared it to the current price to find the upside and whether it's a stock that we should be buying or selling. I hope this video was easy to follow and help you guys out a lot. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below and I'll try and get back with you as soon as I can. I'll also make this model available on my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.